It's time to be Tuesday. Hello! Welcome to To Be Tuesday, and today we are talking about My Best Friend's Girl, which is a 2008 comedy starring Dane Cook, Kate Hudson, Jason Biggs, Lizzie Kaplan, and Alec Baldwin. So, as mentioned before, you know, I don't know, maybe when I first moved out here on my own, I started to get a lot of these raunchy comics because I'm a guy living on my own. I got no responsibilities at the time. So I'm going to watch these raunchy comedies. There was a bunch that I had and I lost, which I got back some of them. But one of them that I haven't got back in physical media form, but I will, is my best friend's girl. Some were stolen, some were lost. This one was lost. Uh, but it's the story of Tank, played by Dan Cook. He's the guy you call when uh, your girlfriend breaks up with you, and you want to show her what she's missing, that she made a bad mistake. You call Tank, he gives her the worst possible date you can imagine, and boom, they call back, you get back together. And you see this from the very beginning, the very first scene of this film, he's doing that. He gets Taryn Killam's girlfriend, which is Deora Baird, by the way. Deora Baird, who was in Accepted. This movie right here that's still sitting on the thing. Uh, yes, yeah, so I found that weird. In a row. And, uh, in a row? That's the movies with her in it. <clears throat> and there's a big, uh, Kowinky Dink <clears throat> moment later on in the film as well. But, uh,. So he, Tank lives with his step cousin, Dustin, played by Jason Biggs. And Jason Biggs is in love with a woman named. Why do I forget her name? Hold on. Is it gonna? Please still be up there, so I can see what her name is. Alexis. It's not on there, but I remembered it. <clears throat> named Alexis, and. Uh, played by Kate Hudson. And he tells her that he loves her, but she, you know, says, oh, I, I like that. I consider you a friend. So he decides to hire Tank. Well, Tank comes up with the idea. Usually he gets paid for, but he's going to do it for free. <clears throat> As a favor, of course. <clears throat> and so he opts to do it. But, of course, because this is a romantic, a raunchy romantic comedy... Tank ends up falling for Alexis, and they end up having a sort of relationship. So, I guess this didn't do well with the critics. I kind of see it. They say it was vulgar. Yeah, it's vulgar, but it's an R-rated comedy. It's got Dane Cook. You have Dane Cook in an R-rated comedy, you're going to have some vulgarness, all right? This, good luck, Chuck, you know... And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up for Dan Cook here. I'm going to go up to bat for Dan Cook because he doesn't get enough, you know, I think he gets a lot of slack, uh, a lot of flack for, flack, he gets a lot of flack for his acting. I think he's really good, you know. The, you know, there's sometimes you get comedians transitioning to acting roles. They don't do so good, but sometimes you do it. Jeff Foxworthy, <clears throat> They had the cable guy, he plays himself, <clears throat> you know, Dane Cook, <clears throat> even, you know, Adam Sandler, who was a stand-up comedian, they can do it, and Dane Cook was one of them, he's good. Uh, one little criticism I have, and it's not, you know, a major criticism, it's just a little thing, is that, okay, so... If you know Dane Cook, you know that he's pure about everything he puts in his body. He doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't do drugs, stuff like that. And you look at the first scene of this film, you can tell that he's not a smoker. How he puts it in his mouth, how he lights it, how he holds it. He doesn't know what he's doing. Compare that to Lizzie Kaplan, who in real life does or has smoked before. When she shows up her scene and she lights hers... It's very known. She knows what she's doing. They obviously didn't give him smoking lessons. 
you know, there's such things as on-screen smoking and, you know, away from real life smoking, but, yeah, it's, uh, you can tell. But Dan Cook is pretty good in this, and I like Kate Hudson in this. You know, the daughter of Goldie Hawn. Uh, and there's, there's sometimes she looks like her mother at times here. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that was Baldwin, who plays Tank's father, who's a womanizer, and gives his son bad advice. It's very bad advice, to be honest, but, yeah. So, it all comes to a head when, uh, so as mentioned, Tank falls in love with Alexis and starts seeing her behind Dustin's back because, you know, he wants to be with her. And so it all culminates when Dustin shows up at Alexis' house, Alexis' house, looking for her, and this is one of the best scenes in the film, I, I think, because you have to imagine if this was a real situation. Like, he comes in there, he's yelling for her, and then she comes out with Tank. And Tank doesn't want to say anything. He doesn't even want to know, recognize that he knows Dustin. And Dustin doesn't say anything either. He could out Tank here. Hey, he's my roommate and I hired him and all that stuff. But he doesn't. And they just sort of act like they don't know each other. And I think that's one of the best scenes in the film is acting like they're acting like they don't know each other. It's pretty cool kind of scene, and then once they get out of there, of course, they go off on each other, there is a slight little thing where they're going down, and he goes, you know, and it's just Big says, you know, I have a day tomorrow, my roommate's moving out, and then afterwards, it's like, after they get there, he says, I wasn't kidding, by the way, you're out, because they live together, you know, uh, yeah, um, there are some scenes that we go too much, like, perhaps, like, so we see Tank's uh, process at the beginning of this when he's dating in an on date with Dior Baird. His 10 step process, what he does. And it goes backwards. So they decide at the end of the film that they're going to show him doing this again at this wedding, which, by the way, is the wedding of the guy he was paid by at the beginning of the film and Dior Baird's character, who is Kay Hudson's sister in this film. Alexis' sister, I should say. Yeah, that's a. What the twist? And so he he overhears Alexis tell her sister that she's in love with him. And because he's he's an asshole and he doesn't think anyone deserves him because that's how his father raised him, he acts like an asshole. And it goes through the process. I I really I just don't think that that's well some of the stuff is funny, like I was kinda like, eh. but there's a scene where he like Tending to sneeze on stuff, and I'm like, Ugh. especially when we're in the middle of pandemic right now. <laughs> I'm like, oh come on, no, this is not gonna take. But then he grabs the, he goes to leave, and he grabs the big fish, and I got me laughing. Like, <laughs> grab the big. He's just like, okay, you know, grabs the big fish. It's, it's funny, and I'm pretty sure that was probably ad lib too. He just grabbed it. Comedian's ad lib, where you say, uh. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessary. And then in the end, where he's like, he flirts with the bride's mom, and then like drops his pants. Are we gonna do this or what? And it's just like, okay, yeah, that's that's how you end it, I guess. But I don't know. Also, like I understand that you can't have him succeed on the first try, but I always feel like it was a cop out that. When he goes to have his first date with Alexis, she's smashed. She's drunk. So she does. She knows that he's being an asshole, but she doesn't care because she's drunk. And it's just like... It's kind of... Like, I understand. That maybe the writers were like, Oh, uh, we can't just have him succeed here because that ruins the film. What we're trying to do, you know? So... We gotta have Herbie drunk too, so she doesn't care. And then, so it ends at this wedding when somehow, yeah, okay, how does, how does, what's his name? Dustin, 
How does Dustin know where the wedding is? He shows up at the wedding and he get he delivers this speech and he reveals what Tank is, what he does, what kind of guy he really is. He reveals, you know, and this was the big moment. They could have had this big moment. She keeps saying, tell me I'm just a job. Tell me I'm just a job. And th this is where he should have said, you're not just a job. Started out that way, but things changed. Because I fell in love with you. I didn't mean for it happened, but it did, and there it is. I pretended to be an asshole tonight because I didn't think I was good enough for you. You know what? Maybe I'm not. Doesn't stop the fact that I'm in love with you. That's how it should have ended. Should have taken him and you back and that how it should have ended and doesn't be like You know, what am I gonna do? But No, because this movie is an hour and forty fucking minutes. We gotta drag this out afterward. I always felt like this is ending was just tacked on. He says, You're just a job. And then we cut to him, you know, then trying to win her back for the next 15 minutes. He's running like a marathon thing that I can never do. He says he ran for two hours. I couldn't do it for two fucking minutes, man. But I'm fat and he's more in shape than I am. And then, like, if that doesn't do anything. And then, like, it cuts to later and he's on a date and she shows up and then she gets. She throws, like, a wine in his face and pretends that. Says that he got her pregnant and then he thinks this is real or whatever and then says that what he did to her sister and he's like he got her pregnant too and then he realizes that she's making this shit up and then they get together which this is gonna be the most confused people in a restaurant which they're clapping but no one on screen is clapping and cheering but there we can hear clapping and cheering but no one on screen is clapping and cheering what is that shit and yeah they get together oh a hey, uh if it, also if you have a question on your mind hey this song this uh Film is called My Best Friend's Girlfriend. Or My Best Friend's Girl. My, my Best Friend's Girlfriend. Right? So, uh, does that, does that have anything to do with the song? My Best Friend's Girl. You goddamn right it does. Because they play it about four or five fucking times in this movie. Played at the beginning. Played a couple of times in the middle. They played at the end. Right? At the end when they get together and then there's a credit thing. And it shows Dustin with Alexis's roommate. And then they play it again in the credits. So, you know, hey. Hey, if you didn't think that this was, you know, we didn't get this because of the song. Hey, guess what? We paid for this song. We're going to play it all throughout the film, man. There's some other, couple other songs in there too. But that's, it's the theme. It's the theme song to this movie, basically. But, uh, yeah, I don't think this is that bad of a movie. I found myself genuinely laughing out loud a bunch of times watching this film. You know, I was cleaning my apartment at the time as well. But, uh, yeah, I think it's decent. I'm going to give it seven. Seven out of ten. I'll give it a seven out of ten. Why not? I think that's a pretty decent comedy. And, uh, yeah, you guys should check it out. I think you might actually like it. Maybe. It's only a seven, but still. So what are your thoughts on my best friend's girlfriend? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty. This has been Tooby Tuesday, and I'll see you in the next one.